Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznuz here, and today's video is going to be all about progressing and becoming better at PVM. Think of this as your guide to progressing your skills in PVM and become more skilled and confident when bossing. Today I'm going to go through a lot of tips that really helped me become better at PVM, and I'm also going to look at some tactics for advancing your skills, including looking at learning different mechanics through different bosses. So the first thing we're going to do is start with the core things you should know about PVM and the best way to learn them and get better at them is no other than the newest boss in RuneScape, the Arch Glacier. Now many of you might have been intimidated by the hard mode version of this boss or not want to try it, but the Arch Glacier can be customized so you can learn your core PVM skills very easily at your own pace and we're going to get into them now and which ones are the most important and which have really helped me increase my level of PVM. All right, so the first skill you should know when PVMing that can really help you is prayer switching. Now, this is gotten by doing the flurry mechanic of the Arch Glacier is a very good way to learn this. Now, prayer flicking is extremely important for PVM, and it's used at a variety of different bosses as a requirement, but also as a skillful tactic to help you at every single boss if you know how to do it right. So, for instance, places like Araxor, Telos, Raksha all require player prayer flicking to be able to kill the bosses, but you can use prayer flicking or switching at every single boss. If you learn how to flick soul split to heal right before a hit gets to you, this is extremely good for healing back HP at different bosses. So by doing the Arch Glacier and turning on the Flurry mechanic, it will really help you get down prayer flicking. So what you should do is make sure you have all three of your protection prayers and soul split keybound. Now you'll practice flicking to range prayer for the green attack, mage prayer for the mage attack, and melee prayer for the flurry swipe attack. So practice this for a while, and after you get this down, try doing the same exact thing. But in the downtime between attacks, switch to soul split. This is soul split flicking, and it's incredibly useful for PVM, and one of the most important things you can learn to do when PVMing. It's basically useful and something you can do at every single single boss in the game. So next, knowing how to use defensive abilities is a core skill for PVM on RuneScape 3. Now the Arch Glacier will also teach you how to use defensives. During the Frost Cannon attack, you need to anticipate and also devotion when the Arch Glacier goes to fire the Frost Cannon or you will almost certainly die. Now defensive abilities like Anticipate, Freedom, Resonance, Debilitate, Reflect, Revenge, Freedom, Barricade, Immortality, are all super important to PVM. So I am going to set you a challenge to try to learn defenses better, and the challenge is to try to survive the Arch Glacier's Frost Cannon without using Devotion at all, but survive it in three different ways. So you have to use three different ways, you can't just use the same way every time, to survive the cannon without dying, but you cannot use Devotion. If you can do this, let me know in the comments how you did it. Now, taking this challenge will help you adapt on the fly and figure out how to use defensives the best way possible. So make sure you go into practice mode because uh, you may die. So we all know that movement is a huge part of PVM used at most bosses, whether it's a Raxor running through his den or at Telos jumping from platform to platform. You will move a lot during PVM and dealing with the pillars of ice mechanic at the Arch Glacier and Developing a pattern using Surge, Bladed Dive, and different mobility abilities is very useful. And it's another reason why the Arch Glacier sets you up so well in terms of learning the core mechanics with for PVM, and it's definitely something that I recommend you go try out. So if you got this far, you now know how to pray flick, you know how to use defensives and move around. So what else is there to learn? Well, of course, damage is a huge part of PVM and learning a solid damage rotation is very important. But even more important than learning a solid rotation is knowing how to be in control of your abilities. I know revolution is something that a lot of people use, and don't get me wrong, I used it for a long time. There's nothing wrong with using revolution at all, a lot of people are very successful with it. 
However, if you would like to try to improve and take the next step in PVM, learning full manual is a great challenge and it will only benefit you in the long run and it will benefit you in terms of being control over all your abilities. Now, the muscle memory you create and learning cooldowns while practicing full manual will benefit you so much when PVMing. One of the very first videos I ever made on YouTube and basically like one of the videos that started my YouTube channel was a guide on how to go from revolution to full manual and it was showcasing my experience and what I did to make the switch. So I'm going to leave that video in the description at the end of the video in case any of you want to take the challenge and see what my experience was like and see the tips I had for you. So what else can you do to get better at PVM? Now this is something that's extremely important and it's keybinds. Yes, keybinds. You don't know how many people I see with barely anything keybinded and really you're just making things harder on yourself. I know just how hard it is to make the switch and to learn new keybinds and frankly it just really sucks when you start out. You're so used to clicking on different things or not having certain things keybinded. Well the best way to go about it is literally just to keybind as much as you can. The most important things you should keybind are your basic abilities and your thresholds and keybind them in a way that is easy for you to reach. If you're learning full manual, this is a great time to take the keybind plunge. Also, keybind your prayers. They're very, very important to keybind, especially when learning prey switching and even more so for prey flicking. Now, defensives are another thing that you should for sure keybind, and in terms of item switches, I think those are probably the last thing you can keybind if you want. But you can also manually cl click them, which I still even do sometimes. And I think that my biggest tip for you when switching your keybinds and setting them all up is to do something that is comfortable to you. Don't worry so much about making everything the most optimal. You can try to keybind it so it's optimal, but it's also good to keybind things so it's easy to learn and remember. For instance, a lot of my keybinds are name oriented. So for instance, B is for barricade, I is for immortality, etc. Is this the most optimal layout for keybinds? No, not at all. But did it help me learn it easier and build it into my muscle memory better? Yes, for sure, it definitely did. Just remember, there's not a right or wrong way to do things like this. You should just do what the best is for you and what's easiest for you to learn. Uh, you don't have to be the most optimal all the time. It's better to, you know, be less optimal but actually force yourself to do something like make new keybinds than be, you know, not do it at all because you're worried that you're not going to be super optimal, you know? It's better to just do it the best for you. The last tip I'm going to give you is to dig Ditch the Beast of Burden. Yes, I know, the Beast of Burden familiar is very, very nice to have and it gives you a reserve of food in case you mess up. However, the added pressure and the need to adapt from having not as much food and bossing like using a Ripper Demon Familiar or something similar is going to make you so much better at PVM. This is one of the main things that helped me take the next step in PVM to become a, I guess, pretty good PVMer. And a lot of you saw my journey through the early Road to Party at episodes. I started doing Solok with a Yak and I ate so much food. I was so scared to switch to a Ripper Demon, but eventually I ended up trying it. And yes, I died and ran out of food a few times. But using a DPS familiar made me adapt and it forced me to Soul Split Flick even more. It forced me to use my more defensives in my rotation like resonance and devotion and it helped me adapt and sit lower hp instead of constantly eating and topping up my hp and it made me such a better pvmer because i had to practice all the things we talked about soul split flicking using defensives and adapting on the fly and it really really helped me so don't be afraid to challenge yourself when it comes to pvm i've preached it before and that is the number one way to to become better at PVM in RuneScape 3. So I really hope that this video helped you out. It was kind of a video made from my personal experiences, but also based on a video I did about oh, seven or eight months ago, which was a PVM progression guide. And this is kind of like, you know, an addition to that. It's more not how to go from, you know, one boss to another, but more how to progress certain skills 
and the things that I personally did to learn them and new things that Jagex are adding in the game to help you learn things like that too. And like I said, there's no wrong or right way to do things. You should do things that you know, you're know you comfortable with, but challenging yourself is also a very good thing. So yeah, I hope these tips helped you. If any of you do that Glacier Cannon Challenge, uh, let me know how exactly you did it and how you survived three times with three different things. The enrage doesn't matter. Um, it's more of a, you know, uh, practical thing than actually about the damage. But yeah, let me know if you got any of you completed that challenge. And I really hope this video helped you out. If it did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. And at the end of the video, of course, that full manual guide will be there as well. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.